What's up, guys? We are back for day three of Pound 2019. We are in top 48. It is that Pelko is doing a good job of not just staying back and, you know, setting up with grenades and mines. Sometimes mm -hmm. he will do a quick little setup and then actually approach you. Right, and right. And then that mixes you up, and then he can either get a grab, throw you towards the grenades, or throw you through the mine, things like that. So he wasn't always just staying back. Yeah, and he did he, a very good job of mixing it up. Yeah, and then he, you know, he would put grenades down, and then he would notice that, oh, I mean, Sunfish isn't, like, picking up these grenades, even though it's right in his face, and it mm -hmm. takes, like, about two seconds or whatever <laughs> for it to explode. So. Yeah. You know, I'm going to just punish him whenever he jumps over it and hit him with, like, an up tilt. Or stay shielding. If he does a, na a late nair, I can mm -hmm. just punish that. Ooh. That almost KO. Oh! oh no, he did not. No way. No, he, he actually got that. Who is this man? Who is this man? Yo, we talk we were talking about fast matches. Look at this. Oh! No! He just went ham on him. What the? <laughs> All right. I no way. Yo. Uh -oh. Yeah, it takes a while for Dark Samus Ooh. to actually get the KO, but yeah. you can definitely snipe it out now with a Force Smash. And, and yeah, like that's you said. <laughs> Hannah was getting a little bit like too greedy with the edge guards that like you were talking about. He was right. like trying to catch him with like back airs or like down airs with the gun. Right. right. And then basically Gimmer, because of his you know Game and Watch, he could go really really low. Right. And Game and Watch has always had that type of recovery in every game that he's been in. So he's Very like, good. okay, I know he's gonna try to re like hit me low with like a back air stuff like that. So I'm gonna go. I noticed that MK Leo like a every time that Adamus gets a little bit close to him, mm -hmm. he already ends up rolling behind him. And DDD, you know, has a little bit of lot of lag on his move. So mm -hmm. as you can see, yeah, see, he keeps rolling behind him and then waiting to see what Adamus is gonna do, and then he just punishes accordingly. So. Uh, right. A rare stock lead for JoJ. Perhaps the first one we've seen this set. Yeah. Okay. I love the patience right there from Joji. He knew that he was going to continuously get pressure from Squirk because he's at Hyper Saiyan. You know, mm -hmm. he really wants the KO. So he just stayed in shield, waiting for something laggy, and then he punished accordingly. A good catch right there at the end, too, from Tweet, because a lot of people, it, it, this happens in, like, every Smash game where people like to save their second jump right before they grab ledge, and they try to trick you where... You think they're going to grab ledge, but instead they just hop back into the stage with their second jump and go for an aerial while you're waiting. But Tweak already saw it coming, and he did that double jump back air, spaced it perfectly, and got the KO off of it. Oh, did he block? Oh, okay, yeah. up there. Good stuff from Nairo, just not jumping oh when he's cornered. Uh, no, get back to the stage! Uh, <laughs> Liam did the adaptation. Yeah. Uh, like after like the second half of the second game. Right? Yeah. Yeah. He actually was you know staying mid range. Yes. And giving him that you know that pressure, not yep. letting him set up too much, and he was getting his damage. Exactly. Exactly, yeah. man. Well, guys, that is it for me. Logic is gonna step in now to continue the doubles commentary with my boy Rod. But as always, it was super godlike to commentate with you, my man. Always.